and for those of you that weren't here when we started the session, my name is Vic Bankus. I'm the uh, Southern Region Native Plant Coordinator for the Forest Service, um, based at our National Seed Laboratory in Macon. That's Macon, Georgia. That's the other part of my job as laboratory manager. Uh, and I'm going to speak today on seed technology for native species, and particularly on using X-ray uh, to determine uh, seed quality and seed viability. Um, <clears throat> we will cover that. We, I'll touch a little bit on how X-ray also relates to tetrazoleum and germinates and testing for those of you who are familiar with that. And, okay, we've seen a lot of pictures of, you know, how seed are collected today and um, this one I borrowed from the, you know, the Florida, I don't know if it's a wildlife commission or what it was, but they didn't have a good flail back slide, so this, this will do, but uh, we've seen a couple pictures with that and, um, you know, here's from the operator's perspective, you know, depending on the size of your uh, uh, tractor and uh, what you're able to mount on the front, you know, you can get into some pretty, um, uh, you know, tight areas, you know, if you're able to maneuver properly. Um, and of course, you see a mix of species here, you know, on, on the ground. We don't always have pure stands of wire grass or a little blue stem, uh, wherever it is that we're going in. Um, this is a combination of things. I believe this was uh, Fort Gordon, uh, not too far from where I'm at in Macon. Um, this is Forest Service research folks that were out collecting and, and get a pretty good idea of, uh, you know, how you might be able to set the height of the uh, flail back so that, you know, you're not down too low where you might collect seed of the species that you perhaps don't want, you know, which, and you can gauge where it needs to be. Uh, based on the height of the seed on the plant, you know, and then this particular shot is from uh, Tyndall Air Force Base, uh, further south in Florida, over on the Gulf Coast, and you've got some wire grass. There's two thick grass there. There's a couple other species. So, um, you know, a lot of our uh, land management agencies and our folks, you know, they don't have the sole intent of collecting just one species. You know, they're going to try to time that. Uh, initial collection at least for when they'll be able to pick up the most seeds from a range of species at that time. Um, the other place where you might see flailback type seed collection is in a seed production area. And this is at the North Carolina Forest Service Nursery in Goldsboro, North Carolina. And uh, through a lot of effort together with the Forest Service and some other partners. You know, we spent a lot of time in the field making initial collections and starting the city's seed increase process. And um, this is what you can end up with on a good site that has irrigation, you know, like a nursery does, so that you can begin uh, cranking some seed out, um, you know, that can be used for either plug production or restoration purposes. Um, and what you end up with then is, you know, seed that needs to be planted either in, uh, especially if you go to container production, you generally have to mix it with something. Um, I forget, who showed the, is that Zach? Showed kids with the, yeah, okay, he's, he's escaped us, but um, I, I need to send him this next slide or two because what South Carolina Forestry Commission does is mix all that wire grass seed and it's almost impossible to see that that's the carrier then. Um, you know, that goes into all this, uh, you know, mechanized line and everything that's just cranked out. Um, you know, he has some prison labor there at South Carolina Forestry Commission, but they do an awful lot of stuff just with a very few number of people. Um, so uh, they have a contract to actually to produce uh, wire rest plugs for the Savannah Riverside for the Forest Service and a number of other cooperators. And boy, I don't know how many grows, but it's, you know, I don't know. I don't know if it's a million or what, but it's a lot. <laughs> so um, they they do that, and uh, you know from there they just move on down the line. It's all loaded onto a uh, frame. The forklift picks it up, takes it outside, and you know, they're ready to go. So that's what you end up with at um, some of the nurseries where we're producing plugs. Um, you know, and of course, essential to this entire process is having the right 
it's having seed, viable seed, that you can use um, for these purposes. So uh, I'm not going to go into um, some of these topics, but you know we have a lot of challenges when it comes to testing. So, you know, sampling, as you might know, really imagine this is a challenge and a half, especially if the seed didn't at least go through that rudimentary process of you know tamping it down through that first screen. You know, and at our lab we'll get paper bags full of just stuff, you know, and they'll ask us, well, how much seed's in here? You know, oh, man, you aren't paying us enough for that answer, you know, but um, we work through it and try to figure out what they've got in there. And, um, you know, we do have uh, an association that actually has rules in place for uh, testing seed. And, you know, for those of you who um, buy, sell, or use, um, you know, lots of other of our rain species, you're certainly well familiar with labels and tags on bags and things. And all that information on viability comes from the seed testing lab like mine. Um, you know, we sort out what we call pure seeds and you know, pure seed units and all that. So um, I'm though gonna focus on uh, X-ray and then again a little on teasing germination. So what is you know X-ray viability test? Um, two, you know it's it's just a, just like what it sounds like. Just when you go to just like when you go to the dentist, we're gonna take an X-ray some seeds and then look at what's inside. Um, basics on the equipment, you know, we're able to set um, a couple of things. We can adjust the kilovolts, milliamps, and the time. Um, kilovolts uh, dictate what the quality of the x-ray will be. Um, milliamps, the quantity, and of course, then the seconds. So if you think about it, it's kind of, I haven't quite come up with a terrific analogy, but if you think of milliamps, um, I think that's kind of it's water coming through a hose. Okay, the milliamps is actually how much, it's, how fast it's coming through, how much of it, and then the kilovolts is sort of, um, you know, if you had the um, equate that to temperature, for instance, let's say out of water out of tap, you know, is it hot or cold, something like that. Um, I keep working on that analogy. Um, for X-ray tests, you know, we've been using this on tree seed and some other species for 40 years, so it's not new technology by any means. Um, it's been around for quite a while, but it's certainly advantageous to be using it with a lot of our native uh, plant species. Some of the advantages are it's fast, it's in real time, um, no damage to the seeds. So if we've got small collections, we're able to x-ray it and send it straight back to the folks. And then, of course, you get this uh, information right away. Um, so here's an x-ray. This is longleaf pine seed, you know, the tree species we've been speaking the most about. Uh, we've got, I know you all can't really see it from where you are, but uh, there are some marks up there on a lot of the seeds, and uh, uh, the red circles indicate physical damage where we actually have cracked seed coats, um, uh, you, know, da you know, structural damage, and then the uh, yellow marks are for seed that we can tell are either missing embryos or have some deterioration and that kind of thing. Um, so when I would report back to the person who sent the sample, what I can tell them is that based on our evaluation, your germination percent will not be, let's just take an example, let's say for, you know, above 80 percent. I can't guarantee you're going to get 80 percent, okay, but I can tell you you're not going to get any more than that, okay, based on <coughs> what I'm able to look at uh, in the extra. So some of the disadvantages, I've got plenty more x-rays, don't worry, we'll look at a few more, but some of the disadvantages are it, it's expensive. Um, you know, the uh, standalone unit that we would use film with, just like when you go to the dentist, I mean, that's at least $25,000 on a government contract. Um, you know, it's obviously not portable. Um, again, it's, you know, it's indirect measure of seed quality. We're not actually evaluating any type of metabolic process as we would with the type of determination test. Um, uh, and again, you know, we'll, it's handy, but it's not necessarily always the uh, best image because, you know, it's a, you're compressing a three-dimensional object into a 2D image. So, um, you know, here's what they look like, though. That's our unit at my lab that we use uh, the film x-rays with. Um, you know, they're not very big. They're, they're a little heavy. You know, this one's at least a two-person job. Um, skip that. Um, there you see our digital unit. It's much heavier. That's a three to four person job to move that. Uh, but there's a little bit more about the uh, specs on that thing. Um, 
this unit's uh, kind of government contract was about sixty-five thousand. Price has come down dramatically. It used to be up at eighty-five to ninety. So uh, you know, it's it's getting better, um, but there's still you know, it's not something that anyone's going to run right out and purchase without either additional funding in their budget or a grant or something like that. And that's what we had to do as well. You know, it's not something that, you know, with our small budget that we're able to just uh, you know, purchase at any time. So um, the line on the bottom, the full one-year warranty, you know, <laughs> I can tell you that for the price, they have to come with a much longer warranty. We've already had some camera issues and things, but, you know, they're fixable, you know, so. Um, you know, so here's the unit at my lab, and you can see, you know, you get your computer with it and everything. Um, you know, so how, so how does this work? You know, how does the digital process work? Um, up on top, you can see the, there's a black uh, box on top of the unit itself, and that's where the x-rays generated. Um, you know, we put the seed in a small tray, and we don't even take them out of the bags for some of the folks. Um, that tray fits inside the unit, um, and there's a. It, it's sitting on a um, phosphor screen. Okay, so there's this piece of equipment in there with a phosphor layer on it. And what's going to happen once we close the doors? The X-ray is going to come down, hit those seed, and that phosphor screen is going to capture the image similarly to like as the film would in, in a traditional uh, <coughs> situation. And then based on our settings camera's going to fire at a certain point in time for a certain length of time, okay, and it will capture the image that's held on that screen, okay? So, at that point then, our computer will, you know, our online our, uh, computer screen is going to show us this, and I apologize, i got a few of my slides here with a little bit of, we'll just call feedback on, but um, it's one of the things about working with digital cameras, and I'm not too slick with that anyway, and then you can throw x-ray in with me. I'm, not as proficient as I wish I was, but um, what we have here are some big blue stem seed, and you can see the full seed have uh, the karyops inside. That's what's reflected or, or contrasted there with the images uh, that have the white on them. The empties, okay. So all these all these white pieces up here, that's all full seed. Okay. Again, I can't guarantee you it's going to germinate, but I can say that at least it has key components of the essential structure. And then all these other gray pieces like that, that's empty seed. So for this particular uh, researcher that we're working with, he's interested in how many um, florets, viable florets are produced um, based on some of the treatments he's providing. So he's sending it all to us and we're just x-raying it, posting it back online on the web. He's pulling images back down and he reads it himself. And he's got an idea then on um, you know, quality of seed produced. Um, now, I'll give you a couple of examples here. This is Indian grass. So that was uh, one collection that came from one of our clients, and then this was the second one. Now you can tell, go back, there's a little bit more full seed here Oops. than there is in that one. So for someone that's going to go out and make wildland collected seed, it's nice to know which areas that I'm targeting might have a better payoff than site five miles down the road, you know. So we have Forest Service, TNC, but, you know, we have folks send us samples every year, you know, and say, check this, you know. Before I go out and spend nick the first nickel on actual collection, I want to know if there's something there. As long as there's a little bit, you know, they can figure out then how much to either put back out per acre if they're going to spread it all back out, or if they're going to work with someone like John, who's at Roundstone is going to follow me, um, they can clean all that up, you know, but you have to make sure that you've got something to start with, you know. If you don't have anything, any full seed at all to begin with, it's a waste of time. Um, okay, so here's our, here's our friend, Mr. Wiregrass, and this is, that's not bad. You might look at it and think, that doesn't look like a lot of full seed, but, you know, on a lot of our sites, that's sometimes what you get. And it can be cleaned up and you can increase the, uh, you know, percent of full seed in your in your um, seed lot based upon the amount of effort and time you put into the equipment you have available. Um, again, that's something that's been improved. So we get some samples like that that are really clean very well. You know, so what's nice about this and the reason that you would do this type of cleaning is because if you're going to go to containerized 
production, you don't want to spread all that empty seed all over everything. You will never be able to get the number of plugs that's required for the production area or your, or your acres, you know, if you can't clean that up. So you know, this is the kind of information that folks want to have. Let them know how well they've been able to clean things up and what they can expect. Um, that's Lespedeza, Herta. That's uh, one of our native legumes here in the south. And that's actually pretty good. You got a lot of insect damage and, uh, um, you know, some of the, see it look like they have holes in them. That's what that is. They've uh, eaten in and uh, messed around with this. Whether or not the person who owns the seed wants to do any additional work on it or not, it's up to them. It's all a matter of, uh, um, you know, how much time and effort and the people they have to do it. Switchgrass, another um, biggie with all the biofuel work and uh, efforts that have gone on across the south to get this into production. I've got a couple of folks that just send us sample after sample after sample. Switchgrass. Some of it's good, some of it's so bad. I feel I always tell them, don't go collect it. They'll check, check, check. You know, they, you know, it's when you get any seed, it's so valuable. And, you know, they just want to get out there and get it while they're there because they may not be able to go back to the site where they collect it. So, um, at least we're able to help them sort out what we've got. Um, okay, so that's the x ray, I'll call the viability test in a nutshell. It's not a whole lot different than what we used to call just a simple cut test, okay, other than um, it's sometimes a little easier and faster for us to look at a hundred seed than it would be for, say, the nursery person or the seed cutter. You know, hopefully when they get out in the field, they're at least cutting a few. Um, you know, but if they've got 24 to 48 hours, they can get out there, strip it, pack it, FedEx it, and then we'll be able to tell them for sure exactly what they've got in the area. So, what is the tetrazolin viability test? That is um, the next um, viability test that we would use on that scale that would run, say, from you know, x-ray to TZ to germination as far as what is the best indicator or predictor of uh, germination, either at your nursery or in the field. So, um, I'll just go ahead and move on to the next slide. There's a couple of pictures here. The tetrazolium test is a uh, chemical test that allows us to expose the tissues to a, um, a chloride salt solution that has uh, a byproduct to it when it's metabolized by cells inside a living seed so that it produces an insoluble compound called formazan, which happens to also be red, okay? So as the solution works through the cells inside the seed, if it's alive and respiring, we will have this byproduct forming the seed sustain. The uh, <coughs> picture on top, um, I think is actually good seed. It just hadn't been in the solution long enough um, based on where the cup was made on the seed. But the solution on the bottom, or excuse me, the seed on the bottom, you can see the embryo is stained as well as all the nutrient tissue around it. Um, just to go back, it is a quick test. We can usually do it within 48, or excuse me, 24 hours. Disadvantage is destructive, it's expensive, it requires um, a good deal of experience to do. It's not something most of the folks in the field or at the nursery want to mess around with. Um, depending on the species, it may or may not be a good indicator of germination, um, the dormancy and vigor issues, you know. Um, when you see that, see it on the left, I, I don't remember what it looks like, it looks like a holly or something. Um, the seed is alive, but if you have dormant embryos and other dormancies inside the seed that you have to overcome, there's no guarantee that when you plant 100 seed that you're going to get 25, 50, 75 percent germination the first year. You know, you may have to have that happen over time. You know, and that's what's so nice about the germination test is you actually get that number. You know, whereas with these technical and the X-ray tests, they're just our best estimates based on the test. Um, so, you know, this that's Steve Gilly with the Florida uh, Department of uh, Forestry and um, Kay Kirk from the Jones Center on the left, and we've got crews across the south they're putting in research studies and the reason I have this picture though is you can see in front of standing in front of this uh, wire grass production area over at uh, Chief one not too far uh, from here. Um, and that, that's you know 
It's a big money maker for these state organizations. It's cranking out these wiregrass plugs for a variety of uh, clients. Uh, again, those are the environments that these will go back into. And here's our two primary stars of the show, Mr. Longleaf on top and this wiregrass right in front of them, uh, along with some oak and some other stuff. And, uh, you know, another area where you'd see some of the seed and seed plugs go back into that's a uh, oil and gas pipeline on the Apalachicola. Um, you know, wiregrass all mixed in, you know, all that other stuff. Again, there's that final picture back at Tindall. That's what we're all striving for. So, uh, again, that's, that's me and my phone number. If anybody has any questions, you know, down the road or after today, please feel free to contact me.